Now, let's take a step back for a second and ask who really benefits from 5G. Well, it's closely linked to the survival of the telecoms industry. Last week, Gartner reported the first year-on-year -year decline in smartphone sales for the critical holiday quarter since 2004. The industry needs new technology to trigger a new burst of profitability and growth. They want consumers like you and me and global businesses to buy equipment and mobile services. And here's a word you may also hear a lot about, spectrum. This is how companies use the airwaves for communications. Spectrum is actually a, a sovereign asset and governments haven't even started auctioning off the spectrum needed for 5G yet. But well, joining us now from London is Daniel Gleeson, a senior analyst in consumer technology with London-based Ovum. Thanks for being with us, Daniel. So uh, just tell us then, why does 5G matter so much? If, if you had to explain this uh, to, to a layman uh, in a nutshell, what is it all about, really? 5G, of course, is it's the next generation of mobile technology. It's going to be faster and more reliable internet speeds on your phone. Uh, but more than that, it's all about having very low latency connections, so very reliable and very quick responding connections. And particularly that's going to be very, very important for uh, enabling new, new use cases for this technology, particularly in things like connected cars uh, or on um, our, our various Internet of Things uh, uh, applications. And when we talk about technology, uh, we often talk about the, what's known as the digital um, divide, that there is this big gap uh, between... Uh, between different um, communities, different cultures, over uh, how, mu how much access they have to the latest technology. It, does this risk further widening the digital divide? There is always this risk, but one of the big things that operators are doing with 5G in particular is that they are using it in very high frequency uh, spaces, what's known as millimeter wave. And in this area, you have very, very high amounts of bandwidth, which is perfectly suitable for doing point-to-point -point communications to rural communities um, and to isolated areas. So this is ideal for helping provide that last mile connection, which, for example, that fibre broadband simply cannot do due to the cost involved. So that's probably one of the big promises of 5G, that in that very high uh, frequency band, that it can help it bridge that gap in a way that previous mobile technologies simply were not able to. Uh, and what sort of... Uh, privacy issues does this bring up? I mean, when it comes to, f to 4G, for example, we, we have already had to give up a lot um, in, in, in that area. Is, is, is 5G going to be the same? Well, in terms of privacy, that's more of a, an application level basis. Um, the technology itself uh, is fairly um, like secure, is very, very secure. Um, the main issues in terms of privacy and security come really on the application level in terms of what your apps are doing and who they're sending that data to. Um, obviously, of course, within uh, 5G, probably the thing that people would, uh, on a network level be more concerned about is that one of the things that 5G enables is a much smaller and denser network in urban areas, uh, where uh, mobile towers will only cover you know a couple hundred meters uh, in each direction, rather than you know 600 to 800 meters, which is what they would usually do now. As I said, the main threat in terms of security and privacy is always going to be on the application level, where the apps like Facebook, Twitter, Google, and many many other apps track your uh, position with much greater accuracy based off the GPS in your device, as well as having access to you know, all the manner of sensitive information, including payment information. It does all sound very expensive, though, doesn't it? And this gets back to the earlier issue of the digital divide. Yes, exactly. And this is going to, as I said, this is probably going to be the big, big problem for operators in terms of how exactly they decide to roll it out. It is going to be very expensive, every part of it, from licensing the spectrum on day one to building out small networks in urban areas and eventually building, bridging that digital divide. As I said, one of the things that regulators have done regularly in the past, particularly with 4G, to try to accelerate this rollout has been to put uh, restrictions or rules around the spectrum that does get licensed. Things like saying, oh, the operator has to cover 90% or 95% of the population within a certain length of time. And often 
with, uh, with even with certain pieces of spectrum, they will say it must be used for this specific purpose and cannot be used uh, for other ones. Um, so that's the kind of way that governments and regulators will try to help guide the rollout of 5G and try to push operators in certain directions. Um, the cost issue, though, is going to be very is going to be very much at the forefront when you think, particularly in Western Europe and in North America, where the mobile net networks are very very mature. Everybody already has a smartphone. The amount, the proposition, or the case for growth isn't very very strong. And that's why operators in particular are looking at these automotive, these industrial and IoT related use cases for 5G to really be the bulk of the business case. They may not be very glamorous or they may not be you know, the most demanding in terms of bandwidth. They're very sensitive in terms of security and in terms of reliability and in terms of uh, uh, latency. And that's really the, the strengths of 5G compared to 4G. Daniel Gleason, good to speak with you. Thank you.